Okay, we're ready to dive into doing the next stage of the modification on our Bowie Range A50. And I'm going to quickly go over the modifications that we've done previously. The first thing we did was we replaced the rectifier tube with a 5AR4, which has less voltage drop than the China uh, rectifier tube that came in the amp. The next thing we did, and let me zoom in here, we put a jumper wire across this 39 ohm resistor, which is a pretty simple thing to do. And then the next thing we did is we added this filtering capacitor between the, this point between the two chokes to ground to help smooth out the ripple on the B+. And then the last step we did is we replaced the two coupling caps. Now, I did make a mistake in the previous video. And this little coupling cap right here, I mistakenly saw the 200 volts here on the top of this capacitor, 250 volts, and I thought that was DC. Turns out that it's AC, and this capacitor can supposed to be able to handle over three, 600 volts DC. So when I was concerned about the voltage rating on this capacitor being too low, it really isn't. That said, this is a fake ERO capacitor, and the MKP1840, if you look them up online, the logo doesn't look anything like this for the real one. So this is a fake capacitor. The other problem with it is it's a 0.56 UF. And even the schematic for this amplifier and the board calls for a 0.47 UF, which in my opinion is still too large for this design of an amplifier and a 0.33 is as large as you really would want to go and so I still think replacing these capacitors like I did these two right here was a good idea to replace them with 33 UF and put them put in some um, actual made in Germany capacitors these are still MKPs and I'm planning on um, replacing these at a later point with some more expensive, they're about $15 a piece, aluminum oil foil caps and see if I can hear the difference in them and report back. But that's not what we're here for today. We're fixing to rebuild the front end of this amplifier. So let me get the camera zoomed in and we'll jump into that. Okay. Here's the section of the amplifier we're going to be working on. This part right here. These two tubes are wired kind of in opposites of each other. You can see like here's the heater, heater pins on this tube. Here are the heater pins on this tube. But on, on this tube, they're using this pin for the grid. And on this tube, they're using this pin for the grid. So they've kind of flipped which trio they're using as the first stage it doesn't really matter and it enabled them to wire it up a little cleaner doing it this way so we're just going to do the same thing they did so the first thing we need to do there's two 20k resistors here that need to be replaced with some that are under 5k ohms and right now it's at 10K because two 20K resistors in parallel is 10K. So we need to remove these two resistors. So we get the soldering iron cleaned up, get some fresh, get the tip freshly tinned. Having some little pliers like this are very handy. They keep you from burning yourself. And we're going to grab this resistor. We're going to heat up that joint right there. Get 
pull that resistor out. Do the same thing with the one next to it. Making sure that we don't have the iron up against the capacitor right next to it. And then we'll come over to the other side. Pull it out. And heat this one up. Pull it out. I'm going to show you a little trick I learned. Get a, get a, just your plain old safety pin. They're made out of stainless steel, so the solder won't stick to them. And you heat up the board and stick the, stick the safety pin through. And as the solder's cooling, you kind of move it around. And it leaves a hole in the board. Let me zoom in here so you can see what, see what this has done here. And you can see now we have a hole there to put our re resistor lead through. And it just makes it easier to solder in the new component if it's already got a hole to put the component through. So we're going to do the same thing here. Like I said, as the solder's cooling off, you kind of just do like a little of that. Now we do have a little excess solder. The other thing you can use is there's some desoldering wicking stuff that you can use that'll kind of mop up solder if there's a little bit too much of a blob so you can put some of that over where you're working and it'll soak up some of the excess solder I think we're going to do a little bit right there too get a fresh place on the braid There we go. And that way we can mop up a little of that excess solder. And we'll go back and put our hole for the new resistor in. And then be careful you don't burn this uh, shielded wire with the barrel of the soldering iron when you're working. Because you don't want to we don't want to have to be replacing that if we don't have to. Okay. So the next thing we want to do, because we're kind of blind soldering into this hole, we want to cut the leads on the new resistor the same length as the ones that we're replacing. So we'll hold them up next to each other and get some cutters and snip that off and do the same thing on the other end like that and we bend the leads over and get the resistor looking like that get the holes to line up and then we'll install this back one first, like that. And get our solder. And we're going to heat the board up first. And then feed the solder in like that. Come over here. Do the same thing over here. And it does stand off quite a bit from the chassis, so there's not a, a real danger of these shorting out to ground. But you don't want to stick that whole you don't want to stick that whole long lead down through there and have it getting close to the chassis underneath there where it could possibly short out. Now we'll come back. Solder that, and solder this. And 
And that's probably one of the harder parts of what we're fixing to do today. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to be removing all the wires off of this off of this tube. So we're going to first thing we're going to do is get this ground get that ground off of this shielded wire and then move that out of our way. And it wouldn't be a bad idea to get a little piece of tape and hold that over. I think I'm going to go grab a piece of tape real quick. I'll be right back. Okay, found a little piece of scotch tape. But anything, anything you got's handy. And just kind of tape it over like that. And that gets, that gets that shielded wire out of our way until we're ready to start working with it again. And let me get that. Here we go, like that. Now we want to go ahead and get, we're going to be removing all these resistors because none of these are the values that we're wanting to use as we rewire this. And we pull that one out. Pull that one out. Next thing we want to do is come over here and remove that one. And they may be a little wrapped around the terminal, so you may have to wiggle it a little bit like I just did there to get it to come loose. Or pull on a little bit. You can use the soldering iron to kind of just don't get too rough with it, but you might have to pull on it a little bit. Okay, and now this over here is the the power side. So I'm gonna heat these up, heat that joint up, and pull those two out. Like I said, you can use the tip if you need to to bend the wire a little bit to get it to come out of the hole. Get rid of that. Okay, this is our plate lead. Okay, and actually, I'm going to go ahead and just get that out of the way too for now. And then like I said, these little pliers are really handy. When you're disconnecting stuff like this. And this is the original cathode bypass resistor or cathode grounding resistor and the bypass cap. And there we go. This is this is pin one right here. And this is pin two. Which is that's the grid of the first section or the first triode. This is the plate of the first triode. And this is the cathode of the first triode. So, on originally, the plate was connected directly coupled to the grid. This is the grid. Five is the plate. And six is the cathode of the second stage. So, in this new wiring scheme, doing this cast code, we're going to be hooking the plate to the cathode. So, we're going to move this end of this wire from here to here. Got a little piece of white wire here we're going to use. It's going to go from there, that pin to that pin. And just solder this in place.
There's that side. And there's that side. So now we've connected the um, the plate of the first section of the triode to the cathode of the, of the second stage. So we've got that part wired. The next thing we want to do, we've already got the grid of the tube connected to the volume control. We may not have the right resistors in stock to do this. Darn, these said 500 ohms on them on the bag and they're measuring 8K. I'm going to pause here and see if I can find some resistors.